to do life. Nigeria's Democracy Day 2021 comes in with a focus on maintaining democratic ideals as a tribute to the labors and sacrifices of the nation's heroes. Garlands around the gather, the legislative arm marks two years of the Ninth Assembly. We will evaluate the performance of the legislature variously described as the engine room of any democracy. Also on political updates today, strengthening security from citizens to law enforcement agencies. It is an eclectic ensemble today, so strap yourself in. I am Fisai Ogunfui. Welcome. The federal government has vowed to act firmly and decisively against anyone or group of persons carrying out attacks on the nation's police force and other security personnel. President Muhammad Buhari, who stated this at the formal handover of security equipment to the police by the Lagos State Government, maintains that it should excite order against anyone found illegally with AK-47 rifles and other assault weapons remains in force. <laughs> The patrol vehicles and other security equipment for the police and other security agencies are the result of effective collaboration and cooperation between Lagos State Government and the private sector in the task of securing lives and property for sustainable growth and development of the economy. All armed robbers, whatever name you are called, kidnappers, courtes, traffic robbers, bandits and other criminals, we will leave no stone unturned in making Lagos inhospitable for you. So I restate our loyalty, commitment and determination to reclaim all public spaces from the hands of hoodlums and continue to work with all stakeholders in strengthening security and public safety. President Muhammad Buhari said the newly acquired security equipment will go a long way in boosting the morale of the police and further enhance their capacity to fight crime and criminality. Lasting security, he said, is a necessary foundation for business, investments and true prosperity, hence the resolve by his administration to strictly abide by his constitutional oath to secure lives and property of Nigerians. As Commander-in-Chief, my primary responsibility remains the security of the country and the safety of all citizens. Despite the many challenges we are facing, I want Nigerians to rest assured that we will secure this country. We will secure our infrastructure, our highways, our communities, and our forests, and we will secure the lives of our people. The president who takes pride in his administration's unprecedented effort at reforming and repositioning the Nigeria Police Force and National Policing Architecture charged the Inspector General of Police to leave no stone unturned towards rebuilding the morale of his men so as to sustain efforts at restoring peace to troubled parts of the country. A nation that turns its police personnel and infrastructure into targets of violence and destruction is a nation on the path of self-destruction. We will act firmly and decisively against any and all persons fomenting or carrying out attacks on our police force and other security personnel. And still on security, the Northwest Zono meeting of the Directors of State Security Services held in Kaduna and Governor Nasir El Rufai urged the service to deploy modern equipment and work synergistically with other agencies in tackling insecurity. 
These are the directors of state security service from the Northwest states, including heads of sister agencies, sharing experiences and exchanging ideas on how best to deal with security challenges confronting the region. They say enough of criminality in the land. Interagency cooperation is sacrosanct to the DSS, as evident in the history of the service. And we should always see ourselves as an indifference with common knowledge and common intention to scare the, the state in particular and then Nigeria in general. Governor Nasr Ahmad Erufai is also emphatic, pledging the resolve of the governors of states in the region to give necessary support in dealing with the disturbing trend of crime. These criminals operate across state lines. Therefore, tackling them requires cooperation and collaboration by the various states. Any plan that seeks to address the problem only in one state will at best yield a temporary respite as the criminals retreat to safe heavens in places where there are no active and continuous counterinsurgency operations. This meeting renews hopes of citizens in the Northwest states that the current security challenges will soon be history. Moving on to the legislature now, the Senate marked a second anniversary this week, promising renewed commitment in enacting laws that will uh, tackle insecurity, create jobs, and boost the economy. Halfway into the tenure, the legislative arm received 745 bills, passed 58 of them, while 250 motions were considered. Senate, under the leadership of the Senate leader, held a roundtable discussion with all the security agencies, and we had very, very supportive resolutions which we passed to the executive arm of government. We promised to break the jinx on the petroleum industry bill, and we are on the verge of doing this by, the, by finally passing the bill sometimes this month of June. The United Senate therefore passed police trust fund bill to enhance the effectiveness of the rank and file in the discharge of their security duty. This country had only two laboratories that can test COVID-19. As we speak now, based on the legislation that we made, through our operation, we have public sector more than 100 laboratories. So in the area of lawmaking for good government of Nigeria, we have performed creatively in this area. But we have been able to do so because of your leadership style. We have confirmed about 60 requests from the executive. Part of our legislative agenda is that we are going to have a Senate that works for all Nigerians. Every Nigerian has a responsibility, just as we do here, to change our attitudes. To provide legal backing to new security outfits, which are poised to close the existing uh, gap in our security architecture. Helping the police with regard to security and the army, we must make sure that we do the needful to make sure that money is so appropriated to them is released to them on time. And I want to say, we have made so much tremendous uh, progress. However, we need to, need to do more. Nigeria has an opportunity to look in and discuss more of the things that bring us together and less of the things that will divide us. Let us now hear from members of the House of uh, Representatives on the two years of the Ninth Assembly. One thousand three hundred and sixty-nine bills. In the first session, we processed eight hundred and fifty bills, and in the second session, we uh, we processed five hundred and uh, uh, nineteen uh, uh, bills so far. We have uh, passed at third reading with three bills. The passage of the police reform bill and the police trust fund bill is also an achievement for which the ninth House of Representatives and indeed the ninth National Assembly deserve a part on the back because these are bills that goes 
to the root of having a policing system in Nigeria that will take care of, of our policy needs. Started very well, developed a, a 10 point um, house agenda uh, which covers uh, uh, a wide spectrum of what uh, the people expect from us in terms of health, education, security, and so on and so forth. So most of, or much of the business we have done in the house has revolved uh, around some of these um, thematic issues. For instance, uh, in the first one year of the ninth house, we had uh, uh, about a hundred resolutions on security alone. With that, we need to work together. And whenever we find ourselves there, we always see ourselves as a brother and sister. And an injury to one is an injury to all of us. So, and based on that, we always work together to, to give Nigeria the best. And I want to appeal to my, with my brothers who are clamoring for separation or decision all, this, all over the land. That is not the answer to their problem. Honestly, it's not the answer. The strength of this country is more than gold for us if you can utilize it. Joining us now is the member representing Lantan North, Lantan South Federal Constituency of Plateau State, Honorable Benila. Honorable uh, La is an accomplished lawyer who has headed uh, House Committees on Women Affairs and Human Rights as well as uh, uh, she currently chairs the House Committee on Science and Technology. She once served as a special advisor to the President on Women and, uh, Affairs and Pastor Administration. Honorable uh, La, thank you very much uh, of your busy schedule, but uh, we have to, you know, look at this through uh, your eyes, your keen eyes. Uh, let's start like this, you know, uh, we have Democracy Day tomorrow. Uh, in your experience, since you have seen what has been happening, especially uh, since the Fourth Republic began and even the struggles before then, have we been able to consolidate, you know, on the gains of this struggle in this Fourth Republic? Thank you very much for having me on this program, Fisayo. I want to say that question is a very interesting question. For those that were born um, before independence, they would, of course, have gone through history of Nigeria. Um, and they would know that Nigeria struggled very hard for independence, our founding fathers. And the question then was, different regions came together to fight for independence. And it's the same struggle that came into play for the Fourth Republic to come to where it is now. Um, of course, for the Fourth Republic, we're under military rule. Unfortunately, um, we lost the likes of Chief M.K. Abiola, who won the freest and fairest election ever in Africa, um, or held in Nigeria, and we lost him due to military dictatorship. And so Nigerians came together, my father being one of them, the late Chief Solomon La, um, Chief Bola Ige, Nwobodo, Alaji Abakarimi, all the different regions came together to say we must fight to free ourselves from military rule. And they did that successfully. And fortunately, the military was able to leave. Now, when the military left, um, then the country stabilized after a while. And then we had the different political parties. Uh, of course, the key thing about democracy is to have a constitution where people's rights are all protected through the constitution and guaranteed in the constitution. Um, and the rights to free and fair elections were very much part of that constitution. Free and fair elections were held, and Nigerians exercised those rights freely. And they participated in this new democratic culture that has brought about um, the rule of PDP for 16 years and now APC for eight years. But one of the things our founding fathers did was they did not look across party lines. Um, you would find that they did not look too much across regional lines either. They worked as a nation. They were very united, and their whole purpose was to keep Nigeria one, indivisible entity, a strong united country that will forge ahead to bring development and to become one of the leading nations in Africa. I'm glad that Nigeria still has a strong GDP compared to 
some of the other African countries and was still regarded as the, as the giant of Africa, but was struggling. Democratically, we've achieved a lot in 23 years. Democratically, we have imbibed a democratic culture. The military, I don't believe, will ever come back to Nigeria. I think Nigerians have defined that rule for themselves. And Nigerians are participating actively in this democracy. And that's one of the key things about the democracy. So I think we've done quite well. Um, I think we still have a lot more to do because we have challenges and teething problems, which is normal. We're going through a learning let, experience. Don't let me get too carried away because I, I still have so many questions I want to ask you. So coincidentally, the Ninth Assembly, you know, is marking its second anniversary. Has it been able to pull its weight as a legislator in trying to, you know, ensure dividends of democracy to the people, especially coming out of that year that was ravaged by a pandemic in killing mood? I think the Ninth Assembly has done exceedingly well in... Um, not just um, stabilizing or playing a key role in um, consolidating this democracy, but I think the Ninth, Ninth Assembly has brought a lot of gains to the nation. Uh, when we had the NSAS protest, you heard what the speaker said. The speaker made a commitment to the, to, the, to the nation to ensure that police reforms are done. And you can see we've done that through the bills and the acts. Uh, we have the police reform bill, we've passed the police trust fund act, and most importantly, we have said that in this budget, the police will see their welfare increased and we will focus more on equipping the police so that they will be equipped to handle issues of internal security. So yes, the Ninth Assembly is playing a key role. I'll come to your constituency, or two of your constituencies, very shortly. But let's take this uh, report. The Minister of Women Affairs is galvanizing Nigerian women as mothers, wives, and caregivers to be vigilant and play their roles as peace builders from the home front for the nation to unravel its security challenges. It's an emergency women's meeting. A wake-up call for women to speak with one voice against the spate of killings and unrest in different parts of the country. When women step into any situation, they must be calm mm -hmm. because of the milk of modern women. Mm -hmm. The purpose of our creation is not thwarted. Mm -hmm. We were created to support and complement the role of men and to ensure that peace returns. Talking to everyone of us from the top to the illiterate woman in the village. And when you see your children falling back down, beginning to show exhibit bad, dangerous character and behavior, it's a duty to begin to you know, call that child to order. We must speak out in every street of Nigeria. We must say no to war. We cannot afford it. We are the losers. It is very critical that we must sit on the round table as a people. The consensus here is that Nigeria must remain united and dialogue should be initiated to resolve grievances. Women taking a stand and trying to galvanize for progress, peace and unity. But uh, let's uh, look at our constituency. Uh, you being a woman, of course, uh, and uh, you've acted in several roles as uh, national uh, presidential advisor on women affairs as well as head of the uh, committee on, you know, on human rights and women of, as well in, uh, one, at one point or the other. Let's now look at a key feature, a key feature of democracy, which is inclusiveness and women. Have we been able to forge a clear path, especially for women, uh, you know, to political relevance and uh, being, being able to uh, fulfill potential? Um, if you look at the women who are our heroes today, Mrs. Fumilayo Ransom Kuti, um, Haja Gambo Sawaba, Haja Leila Dogon Yaro, um, Mrs. Florence Etbo, and so many other women who fought for the rights of women, you realize that women actually have not lived up to the expectations. The role of women um, hasn't actually been recognized and appreciated in Nigeria as much as it should have been. This struggle started way back, even before independence. Uh, women in Nigeria have been very, very proactive, but for some reason we've not been able to galvanize ourselves to be mainstreamed into the system. And that's why now we're looking at the constitutional amendments. We're praying and seeking for the support of men such as yourself and other men to see if um, the constitutional amendments that will come up will at least create additional seats for women as is done in Rwanda, 
Uganda, South Africa, and many other countries. To tell in effect. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. We do uh, need the extra support. All right, let's, uh, let's move quickly to one other sector. You have been at least uh, performing your oversight on the Ministry of, Science, Ministry of Science and Technology, the sector itself, uh, for years now. Uh, many countries, although not many in our climes, but many countries, f you know, fell back on their ministries of science and technology, science and technology sector to create solutions, especially when there was their need for one, especially uh, just, you know, coming out of recession, pandemic and all that, especially in countries like ours where we have been basically talking about resource. Now we're talking of value addition, we're talking of, you know, um, you know, ICT and all that. Have we been able to leverage on that sector to maximize our potentials as a co country, especially looking at the manufacturing sector of Nigeria? Thank you very much. I can tell you that we are doing that. We are in the process of growing the sector to ensure that we become independent, self-sufficient, and we do not rely on importation because, as you know, uh, we have been reliant on oil. And because of oil and our dependence on oil, um, oil revenues, we have been um, a little bit lax in producing our locally homegrown indigenous technology. But right now, the story is changing. I'm sure you're aware that there are lots of entrepreneurs that are now homegrown. Uh, we also have a lot of linkages between the agencies under the Ministry of Science and Technology that are directly working with companies, for instance, Innocent Motors. Innocent Motors um, has, and at the beginning of uh, the inventions, they work very closely together with uh, the center in Inewi of one of our agencies to develop um, Innocent and even to improve on it. We also have... Um, um, a lot of improvement from the through the Raw Materials Development Council before Dangote cited his cement industries. The Raw Materials Development Council um, did a feasibility studies and assessment and advised him on where to go to find good sources of cement and build a cement industry there. And we know uh, Dangote is worth billions. And there's many strategic industries like that. We are also developing agricultural mechanization, homemade agricultural machines, so that our farmers do not have to import any machines. And all these are being... Oh, all right, let, let, let me just say, this <laughs> last story before we come for the home run. As party members jockey for positions ahead of the All Progressives uh, Congress wards, local governments, states, zonal and national congresses, a member of the APC, Mohamed Belo Mustafa, is conversing for the engagement of the younger generation in more uh, key administrative uh, positions. The future will look brighter and promising is for us to remain united, to bring ourselves together, irrespective of our differences. We must respect one another. There is no part of this country that can survive without the other. Each of the parts or component parts need one another for survival. Therefore, I'm using this opportunity to call on all our teaming young people in this country to please, to please come together. The result of our consultations has yielded, you know, positive, positive results because the youth and the young people have all accepted our clarion call to come together and embrace peace. That the future of this country is very bright for the young people. We have a brighter future. Therefore, we should not allow ourselves to be used by agents of destabilization, by agents of destruction. Those agents that are bent on destroying this country, making sure that this country is disintegrated. Hi, for the home run, just uh, a word or two, you have been able to straddle both executive I uh, a special advisor and you are in the legislature for years and uh, you are also a product of one of the founding fathers of the uh, country, Chief Solomon Lau, was also in the, you know, in the first national assembly in 1960. You've experienced it all as a child and now you are in government. Um, are there comparisons between that generation and now uh, where we are lacking and where we still need uh, to, you know, buckle up? I think that generation didn't look at... Um issues like ethnicity, regional differences. Um, you'd find Chief Solomon Love in Kano, 
with Al Hajirimi going around everywhere. They would visit mosques together. They would go around and meet people. And the same thing, Al Haji Abu Karimi will come to Plateau, Langtang, and uh, move around freely, attend churches, and, and go to ceremonies. And the same thing with the uh, Al Haji Latif called Lakonde, Jokonde, Chief Jim Mobodo. The founding fathers did not have differences that were felt in the country. And their one mission was to work for the unity of this country and also to ensure that every Nigerian had a sense of belonging. And they also worked hard to ensure that Nigerians had a good standard of living, which we are still doing, but our population has made it a little bit more challenging for us. Um, but the one thing about it is that they knew that Nigeria is great and Nigeria will be greater, and they always said it, and I believe Nigeria will be greater. All right, on that great, you. Uh, uh, you know, soundbite, we'll let, leave it on the program today. We've had uh, Honorable Benila representing Lantan North, Lantan South, a federal constituency of Plato State. Next week, again, we'll bring one uh, another position in your way and be looking at all these other, you know, processes to bring uh, to your living rooms. My name is Fisa Ogunfi, urging you to stay on with the Nigerian Television Authority, where we give you the very best of news, reviews, previews, and interviews, and urging you to play your politics for the greater good. Bye-bye now. Thank you.